Strain gauges are one of the most common sensors used in a variety of testing across many industries. They come in many shapes and sizes and can be used individually or together with other gauges to make a variety of measurements. As we get started, let's talk about what they are and how to make connections. Strain gauges allow us to quantify strain, but what is strain? Strain is actually the change in the length of an object in response to an applied force. For example, on this specimen, this brass specimen I have here, there's a strain gauge on it. And when I put it in tension, it gets a little bit longer. And when I put it in compression, it gets a little bit shorter. The strain gauge has a sensing element that converts that change in length to a small change in resistance that we can make use of. When we properly connect the gauge into a bridge circuit, we can then directly convert a stress or a strain applied to an object into a voltage we can work with. Now let's talk about making connections to strain gauges. So the first consideration is how far is the gauge going to be from the data acquisition system? And this has to do with the way we implement a cable solution to, to get good and accurate data out of the gauge. If the gauge is within about 10 feet or less from the data acquisition system, then the best way to connect it is to use a half bridge completion cable, like the one I have connected to this gauge here, and make use of the half bridge feature in the software that controls the data acquisition system. When you do this, you've effectively created a Wheatstone bridge that will give you accurate and stable output from the strain gauge. The half bridge completion cable contains a precision resistor that has to match the resistance of the connected gauge, typically 350 ohms, a sensor ID chip, and it's designed to connect a single gauge to the data acquisition system using the three wire method which is the most accurate and stable way to get good output from a single strain gauge. If the gauge is to be located a long distance from the data acquisition system, say 50 or 100 feet, then the best way to connect the gauge is to place a full bridge completion module adjacent to the gauge installation itself and then connect that gauge installation to the data acquisition system using a high quality four-wire shielded cable. Where do you get bridge completion modules? Well, I generally shop at MicroMeasurements, a premier provider of strain gauge products. For strain gauge applications more complicated than, say, a single gauge, I highly recommend the online resources available on the MicroMeasurements website. Once you've made appropriate connections to your strain gauges, the next question is, how do you create a sensitivity number to allow you to make sense of the strain data when you read it out in your DAS software? Well, we have an excellent resource on the DTS Help Center. All you have to do is type the word strain into the search box and you'll find several documents, everything from how to install a gauge to calculating sensitivities and other values from your strain data. I hope this brief overview has been helpful. With a little information, strain gauges are easy and fun to work with. For more information on the resources mentioned in this video, see the links below, and happy testing!